All right, everybody, what is going on? We're back with another vlog. It hasn't been long since the last one, but uh, I thought today would be a cool opportunity to take you guys through my schedule when it comes to working around doing night shifts. So, you know, my job, you may know by now, is a shift work position. Um, I've got day shifts, I've got morning shifts, afternoon shifts, night shifts, and at the moment, I'm on a three night shift block. So I did one last night, I've got another one tonight, and I've got another one tomorrow. Now, this vlog I feel like is going to just cover probably today, tomorrow, and the next day, just to show you guys how I structure you know, my daily routine around doing night shift, around having to, to go to work. They're 12, oh no, they're 11 hour night shifts this time. So it's from 7.30 at night till 6.30 in the morning. And you know, it can be, it can be tough to, to, to get through that, especially because they're active nights. We're not actually meant to be, uh, we're not actually meant to be sleeping. So effectively, like for example, last night, it was my first one back on a block of nights. So I stayed up the whole entire night. And this morning, I could have either crawled into bed and woken up at who knows what time and wasted a day or I could space out my caffeine throughout the night so that I could have a nice hit just when I finished work and go and smash a workout which is exactly what I did and I did legs, legs at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday morning after having done 12 hours night shift and that shit guys, that shit will inspire the fuck out of you I'm telling you. It's what you do when no one's watching that counts. That's that's all I've got to say. So with that being said, guys, it's around about 5.30 at night. I've got two hours until I go back to work. Now, I did consider going down to the gym now and smashing out another session before I go, go back to work. But the next session that I need to do is deadlifts, and I really need to hit them hard. That's why I did legs today, and I'll do deadlifts tomorrow. If I had have tried to do some deadlifts today, there's no way I'd be having the mobility I, I'd want um, with leg day coming the next day. So legs are done. I'm doing back tomorrow morning. I'll show you guys what I take to work as far as food goes. Um, last night it was a massive Tupperware container filled with chickpeas, rice and chicken. Um, you know, that was probably around about 200 grams of carbs, 200 grams of protein that I just ate throughout the night. As well as that, I added on some carbs, I added some pikelets, some bagels, and some wheat bix So with that being said, guys, tonight's probably going to be no different, but I will show you when I know. Uh, for now, I'm about to go and watch probably the only program I actually enjoy watching on TV, which is called The Prophet. And it's about this guy, Andre Lamanis, who's in America, and he goes to struggling businesses and puts his formula in and invests money invest capital in the business, takes a percentage, and then starts trying to restructure the business and get it uh, performing at its highest capabilities, making profit again. And he does it every single time, every single time. So he's a fucking legend, this guy, Andre, Andre, Marcus, Marcus, not Andre Lamanis. <laughs> I think Andre Lamanis is the um, Australian basketball coach. <laughs> His name's Marcus something. Anyways, it's a great program. It's called The Prophet. I do recommend it. But I like shows like that. I like Shark Tank. I like Dragon's Den. I love business-related shows. I love entrepreneurial sort of shows. I think that's what that's the uh, category you could put it in. But anyways, I'm going to get onto that. Two hours to go. Like I said, I'll get some meal prep done, and I'll show you guys what I'm having before I go to work. Peace. All right, guys. So it's about six thirty. Just getting my shit ready, as you do, taking my time. Now, you may have, you may not have seen these Tupperware containers, or they're not really Tupperware, but they're cheap fucking plastic containers, that I am now putting my protein uh, sources in. So it's making it really, really easy for me to just open the fridge whenever I've got to go out to a work day, or, or basically just to work. I'm not going to take fucking kangaroo to town with me. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, when I go to work, I just can easily grab a container, take it to work with me. It's frozen, so it stays cold for the first few hours. I don't have to worry about putting it in the fridge. Um, as well as that, I can take carbohydrates to add in where and where, when and where I see fit, like I've said before. So today, guys, we've got 500 grams of kangaroo mints. With that, I'm going to be having 450 grams of basmati rice. The total gives me around about... 
15 protein, 8 fat, and 130 grams of carbs. So, so with that, I'll also take some chickpeas. Now, chickpeas are something I relied on heavily um, during my last cut. I found them to be a great way to increase volume, and I actually really like the taste, to be honest. What I'm doing now, guys, is taking all three of those ingredients to work in a big Tupperware container. Obviously, the meat is still frozen, so I won't do that just yet, but I will be putting the rice and the chickpeas in that big container, and then throughout the night, um, add the kangaroo. Or eat the kangaroo from that container and eat the fucking carbs from that container. I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. As long as I take the food with me, it's okay. All up. Chickpeas, kangaroo, bagels, rice, protein bar, honey, and a shaker full of BCAAs. So, I'm going to put all that into a bag. And I will see you guys throughout the night. At night shift, I'm going to take my computer with me as per usual. I feel sorry for these guys coming on night shift with nothing to do, man. It's like, really? You're going to come to work for 11 hours and not work on something else? Like at night. I mean, you come to work in the daytime and you're, you're busy the whole day. But at night, there's honestly, there's fuck all to do. And I see it as my editing time. So that's what I do, guys. And I'll see you there. All right, guys. What is the time? It's about quarter to 11. The clients are all in bed. Everything's under control at work. So I've come down to the kitchen and I'm going to have my second meal. Um, the bagels are gone, protein bars are gone. And that's what I usually do when I bring stuff to work. If I've got a massive like meal made and then I've got some snacky sort of foods, I'll most likely reach for the snacks first before I eat the main meal. And that's exactly what I did tonight. But with that being said, guys, here is the kangaroo mints. Here is the container with the rice and the chickpeas. Put some barbecue sauce and some mustard with it. So I'm going to pour all of this into there, mix it all up, and probably eat half now and half at about two in the morning. And that's how we're going to do it. So I'll see you guys at the next meal. What up? It's quarter past four. And now is the time that really kills you. So I've actually managed to have a couple of hours sleep. I've got probably about half of that uh, rice and chickpea mix. So I'm gonna have that in about an hour. And that'll tie me over until I finish work. That'll be about two hours before I train. Planning on training at around about 7 a.m. Um, I'm finishing work at 6.30, so shouldn't be a problem. Go home, get changed, go to the gym. I've just got to just wake myself up now. So, first things first, I'm going to have coffee, and then I'll eat that meal afterwards, and we'll be well on the way to smashing out some deadlifts, which I can't wait for. So yeah. What up? We're done, finally. Fuck those last hours really fucking dragged, I'm telling you. But it's about 6.30 in the morning right now. Luckily my co-worker wasn't late so I'm able to take off as soon as possible. I ate the rest of the chickpeas, rice, and kangaroo mints at about quarter past five. Um, I had a coffee at like 4.30. Uh, so, honestly guys, I'm, I'm feeling all right, to be honest. It's, 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 it's really funny with night shift, you know. I can, be, I can be feeling so tired and so moody in the last few hours of my shift, and then all it takes is for me to leave work and get outside the gate and I feel sweet again. So that's exactly the kind of feels that I've got going on right now. You guys have got to see the sunrise, man. It's pretty epic. Fuck.
Right, everybody, we are here. It's seven o'clock in the morning, here to train some back. <sighs> so, got my belt. This gym is called Lassiter's Hotel and Casino, and it's a five star casino and hotel right here in Alice Springs. So, as you can imagine, the gym is quite, it's quite good. It's a lot bigger than any time. It's got some good room to do cardio. It's got room to do walking lunges, which Anytime Fitness doesn't have, which really fucks me off on leg day. Um, and it's a really good place. So, with that being said, we've got the belt. We've got the music. We've got straps. We've got pre-workout. And we're gonna go hit some back. So let's do this. All right, everybody, we're back. It's that time again, it's a post-workout meal time. And first meal is gonna be a shake, followed by a solid meal after that, followed by another meal, and then I'm gonna to go to sleep because obviously I, I loaded myself up with caffeine to get through that workout. It was a fucking awesome workout, I did some back. Um, I had plans on doing deadlifts, and then I got rudely reminded that Lassiter's Hotel and Casino do not have a specific sort of deadlift platform you know it's probably more so like your planet fitness in america i don't know anyways you can't go you can't go throwing chalk around you can't go smashing weights around so i didn't do deadlifts i did 10 sets of 10 on the bent over row i mixed up the grip between overhand and underhand whatever i felt like at the time i did 10 sets of 10 like i said the first four sets i was able to do with 100 kilo. The second four sets I did with 90 kilo and the last two sets I did with 80. So I got the 10 sets of 10 out of the way. From there we went to some more rowing movements. I went over to a smith machine and I put 40 kilos on each side, two plates. You know when I'm training I have this philosophy if I'm feeling good on a movement, the pump is good, I'm feeling the contraction, why would I stop I'd much rather do seven or eight good sets on three exercises than do, you know, three, four or five sets on five or six exercises. I don't see the point in doing so many exercises. When I do a certain body part, let's say back, I'm going to concentrate on one heavy rowing movement, a heavy pull down movement, as well as some supersets and, you know, extended hypertrophy work. Today I probably did a little bit more volume than I'm used to, to be fair, but honestly with these extra calories, with being in a surplus, feeling strong, I'm wanting to stay in the gym longer now, so it's it's not an issue for me. Uh, as long as I get 20, 25, you know, no more than that, working sets on a particular body part, I'm happy with that. So with that being said, after the two variations of the bent over row, I went over to some dumbbell bent over rows. I got the I got the belt nice and tight, got the dumbbells with the straps, so I'm pulling through the elbows. Nice and tight, nice and slow, and then squeeze, and then let it down real nice and slow and squeeze. And honestly, like the rowing movement, I, I stayed on for so long because I was just feeling the contraction so well. So doing that, we did some lat work. I went over to the lat pull down, did some pull downs with the conventional bar. The grip was just slightly uh, further out in shoulder width. And that is how I like it. I don't like to go too wide on the lat pull down. In fact, my favorite grip is actually a neutral grip and that's what I moved on to next. I put some handles on there, got the unilateral movement and did some neutral grip lat pull downs. So, that was it. One big back workout in the books. And like I said, it's my favorite time now, post-workout meal time. A shake is gonna be happening. We're going to be using Egg whites, protein powder, milk. So, four ingredients, easy as that. I'm gonna get onto that and I'll see you in a minute. And I actually haven't had any creatine today, so you know, I used to think that I had to mix it with something, and I think that was the main. And I think that was probably the main reason why I was always skipping it because I'd see it and think, "Oh fuck, I've got to mix it with something to be able to take it." 
But I tell you what, guys, it doesn't, it honestly doesn't taste like anything. You can just go like this. And it's gone. There's no aftertaste. It's fine. So, with that being said, creatine's done. The shake is done. All right. Now, seriously, guys, seriously, that is some good shit. I'm telling you. Mm. So damn good. So damn good. The, um, the flavour of NTS Whey I've got at the moment is Cinegram, which I got because it goes with pretty much anything. And it definitely goes with oats and banana and chocolate and peanut butter and things like that. So I would have to recommend it. But with that said, here is my shake. That's done. Post-workout meal is going to be, once again, one of the Tupperware containers with 500 grams of kangaroo mints. I'm going to mix that with, once again, some rice. So we got 100 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, two meals, 50 grams of protein, 75 grams of carbs per meal. You can't go wrong. That is going to be what I'm going to use. And that's it guys, I will see you in the next clip. I'm not sure when I'm going to go to sleep, but it's times like this, when I am sleep deprived and I've smashed a workout and I'm about to eat a nice feed, that I don't feel like going to sleep, to be fair. So fuck it, who knows when I'm going to go to sleep. But I'll let you guys know when I know. <sighs> i got to stop talking and eat this shit. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Oh.